African youth have to harness uh, the fourth industrial revolution because it's the only way for Africa uh, to catch up. What is important is innovative skills and technology that transforms the well-being of the people. Et on peut comprendre uh, qu'aujourd'hui qu'on soit vraiment uh, très proactif pour pouvoir former nos jeunes pour préparer nos économies de demain. We owe young people in Africa the opportunity to be able to be part of the future of the continent. Uh, Moses Osiru. Um, I'm the uh, manager of the Regional Scholarship and Innovation Fund of uh, PASET. The conference is, um, is, is a special platform. It brings together African universities, of course, uh, together with uh, industry, um, the sector, and with uh, policymakers. And it, it gives us an opportunity to, um, to rethink uh, the vision. Um, and the mission of, of, um, of RCIV. Uh, it also gives us an opportunity to take stock uh, of progress so far in terms of implementation of the RCIV programs. RCIV has been um, running uh, at ICIPE since 2018 and I think three years is a good time to, um, uh, to, to, to reflect um, on, on the progress so far, the lessons learned and how we can improve the program uh, towards uh, meeting the objectives of, of, uh, of RCIV. So all these um, scientific stakeholders from across the globe discussing issues uh, for our future to ensure the sustainability of, um, of our continent. This is um, a recognition that science is critical for Africa's development and Africa must be able to invest in, in capacitating its institutions, which are the universities, uh, which will then um, subsequently train our future scientists uh, train our future um, professors and ensure that we can bring the solutions that we need to develop our own continent uh, in a sustainable way. So this uh, meeting gives us an opportunity to also share the full story of what uh, RCIF is and of course benefit uh, from the uh, feedback from our key stakeholders. We, we recognize the importance of all the stakeholders that we work with uh, their expertise is invaluable, uh, both across the continent, but also importantly uh, outside Africa. And so the inputs that you provide uh, are critical for the success of, uh, of this initiative. So we'd like to uh, welcome you uh, to the conference. We also ask you to be candid um, in your inputs uh, to make sure that we can benefit from your participation. And uh, we ask you to engage, uh, to engage um, in, in this meeting, but also to engage afterwards, such that we can grow uh, the partnerships that are necessary to make RCEF uh, successful. We are OCP Africa, an African fertilizer producer and agricultural solutions provider created in 2016. We have strengthened our position in the continent and contributed in a major way to build more resilient food systems in Africa. We have supported ambitious agricultural development strategies of many of our public and government partners in Nigeria. Ghana, Senegal, Côte d'Ivoire, Egypt, 
Ethiopia. Rwanda Guinea Conakry and Burkina Faso Through our holistic and human-centric approach we have reached more than 1 million smallholder farmers in 12 countries Thanks to our private partners, our programs have provided farmers a comprehensive set of services, inputs, finance, insurance, training, mechanization and access to markets. During these past years, our commitment towards youth and women has grown stronger. We have developed targeted programs and initiatives to empower these strategic communities for Africa's future. OCP School Lab a mobile school and soil laboratory to promote sustainable agricultural practices. AgriBooster, an inclusive program that provides farmers with the best conditions to increase yields and income. Women in AgriBooster, an initiative dedicated to empower women and support them to produce food crops for their communities. FarmerHouse, a last mile distribution solution for a better availability and accessibility of agricultural inputs. AgriPromoter, a farmer-centric approach reaching small rural farmers and providing agricultural inputs and training. Empowering African Youth, EME, a program that empowers young leaders through training and digital equipment to become expert and ambassador in the agriculture field. Innovation has been a key lever in our adventure. It has enabled us to know African soils for better fertility management, to elaborate customized fertilizer formulas for strategic crops with the support and dedication of diverse partners. Another major enabler for us has been the digital technologies applied in agriculture. We have developed throughout the years digital solutions to bring value and support to smallholder farmers. Hi, good morning. Today, uh, we are uh, very happy uh, and honored to welcome you at the M6P uh, University, uh, their ministers, senior government and university uh, representative, colleagues, researchers from different African institutions, and also uh, young African scientists, and particularly PhD students that they will join us uh, for uh, research training under a supervision of uh, outstanding researcher at the M6P, and they are coming from the, the networking uh, RC. Uh, from all objectives of this conference, I will pinpoint the main question of how to strengthen, to increase, to improve the doctoral training, research, and innovation in Africa, and how to enhance the sustainability of the IRCIF that I believe is a very important uh, network for research uh, within the Africa uh, continent. And I will let my colleague uh, Moses to introduce all the objectives of this uh, conference. This conference is co-organized uh, by Mohamed Sis Polytechnic University, the IRCIF Regional Coordination Unit, the, the International Center of Insect physiology and ecology and all the ERCIF international partner institutions and we are happy to oh, be great. part of the this uh, uh, network <clears throat> and they will i would like to uh, to and also this conference was supported uh, with a great support from ocp africa and for that i would like to thank uh, professor anwal jamali unfortunately he will not be uh, available today and he is uh, represented by Anis Burakadi. And I would like to thank also my colleague, Abdel Ghani Sharboni, here today, and he joined the M6P uh, also. The M6P Center for Doctor Studies uh, for the, the organizing with the, the Communication uh, Center and Digital Center of the M6P for all the, the organization, Moses, and all uh, his colleagues and all people involved in this organization, orga organization of this great event. And I will also like to express all my thanks 
to our uh, president, Mr. Hisham al habti that I invite to for the opening sessions and many thanks. And we are welcome to the M6. Assalamu alaikum, sabahir, bonjour, good morning. Excellencies, uh, professors, ladies, gentlemen, esteemed guests. On behalf of Mohammed VI Polytechnic University, it is my pleasure to welcome you uh, to this edition of the Regional Scholarship and Innovation Fund's Pan-African Conference. Duly titled African-led science, technology and innovation for contributing to SDGs and stimulating global development, this edition comes with a special significance for our academic community at UM6P. From its founding, very founding, our university has put a special strategic, operational and scientific emphasis on collaborating with its larger African scholarly environment. Besides being a great honor the organization of this prestigious conference within our Ben Gurir campus is yet another confirmation of our serious commitment to Pan African academic collaboration. I would like to thank our partners at OCP Africa, PASET, ACIF, and ICP for their active role in making this gathering a reality. In its long march towards development, Africa is today at a critical crossroads. As Africans, the state of the world around us has reminded us yet again of the necessity to galvanize all our energies for the purpose of empowering growth and development from within. From a lingering pandemic to food shortage linked to geopolitical crisis, to climate change, to growing digital divides, Africa is finding itself vulnerable to global uncertainties more than ever before. And yet, Africa is also the land of limitless, inending potential on all fronts. In fields such as food security, climate, data science, artificial intelligence, energy, minerals, mining and materials engineering, Africa's talented researchers are seizing on digitalization to leapfrog across all holders and develop tangible solutions to their community's challenges. For that endeavor, African universities must be front and center in catalyzing the sort of innovative spirit that identifies opportunities instead of difficulties. All African universities, no matter where they are, but the responsibility to incubate our continents, a gray matter is also the business of everyone. Businesses, governments, civil society and academic institutions have everything to gain by sustaining synergies that keep their eye on the prize, Africa's sustainable development. In this respect, I'm particularly delighted to witness the diversity of stakeholders in attendance, civil servants, business executives, development professionals, PhD candidates or tenured researchers, each of you brings a unique perspective uh, to the role of science in catalyzing development. For five years now, our story at UM6P has confirmed that partnership between academia and industry can be a net plus for both, but also for society as a whole. Thanks to the generous support of OCP Group, UM6P was empowered from the get-go to pioneer a model based on experimental research, learning by doing, and the incubation of African youth potentials. Our continuous growth within the Ben Greer Green City and across Morocco is proof that multi-sectoral investment in education, research, and innovation can be a force of good for communities and indeed, for whole countries. As such, we enthusiastically expose the PASET's approach of bringing together academia and industry to tackle current issues. 
with at the same time involving governments and development professionals. I'm personally confident that this conference will be a great opportunity for shared learning and partnership development for all participants. I encourage all of you to take full benefit of these two days for what is certainly a first of many such gatherings. Thank you for your attention and happy conference to all. Thank you. Mr. President, thank you very much. And we have just a short video of your introduction about dm 6 p and OCP Africa. It will take uh, five to six minutes after uh, Moses will introduce uh, all the objectives of the, the conference and uh, thank you very much. In 2017, a new research and innovation university was inaugurated here in Morocco. Designed from the outset to be an ecosystem for innovation, research and entrepreneurship, the first of its kind to be built in Africa. A next generation university with five founding principles. Promoting research, innovation and entrepreneurship. Developing skills and knowledge. Bringing forth a new generation of competent leaders. Developing sustainable partnerships sharing the values of social responsibility and sustainable development. Attracting many of the best minds from Africa and across the world to its main campus here in Ben Guir, 50 kilometers from Marrakesh. Mohammed VI Polytechnic University has a forward-looking approach to research and education, fully focused on innovation, experimentation, and the pursuit of excellence with an ethos of learning by doing. PhD students and professors work together as part of a unique entrepreneurial culture, developing pertinent research projects critical to helping Africa realize its potential with experimentation at the heart of education, starting research in small laboratories before scaling up to full-size experimentation in our living labs. such as the experimental farms to test new methods in agriculture and fertilization. Making ideas grow and incubate in the innovation and entrepreneurship platform with a network of mentors, coaches, and numerous scale-up opportunities. Tackling the challenges of education in Africa is a core principle of the university by being close to policymakers while being anchored in academic analysis and knowledge the university focuses on bringing concrete answers to the population's needs. The Digital Learning Lab develops digital modes of education, including massive open online courses, widening the reach of education and knowledge. The university aims to bring forth a new generation of environmentally conscious, competent leaders, offering scholarships to the best students from remote areas being socially inclusive, giving a chance to everybody to succeed. The university is connected to a global network of academic and research institutions, while also developing partnerships with public institutions and industry, collaborating in R&D, continuous education, and knowledge transfer. Revitalizing agriculture in Africa is a challenge not only for the people of Africa, but for the people of an ever-growing world. By bringing humanities and technology sciences to the continent, and by educating the next generation of competent leaders, Mohammed VI Polytechnic University brings a solid contribution to Africa's sustainable development. Mohammed VI Polytechnic University Nurturing today's talent, impacting tomorrow's Africa. We are OCP Africa, an African fertilizer producer and agricultural solutions provider created in 2016. 
We have strengthened our position in the continent and contributed in a major way to build more resilient food systems in Africa. We have supported ambitious agricultural development strategies of many of our public and government partners in Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal, Côte d'Ivoire, Ethiopia, Rwanda, Guinea Conakry, and Burkina Faso. Through our holistic and human-centric approach, we have reached more than one million smallholder farmers in 12 countries. Thanks to our private partners, our programs have provided farmers a comprehensive set of services, inputs, finance, insurance, training, mechanization, and access to markets. During these past years, our commitment towards youth and women has grown stronger. We have developed targeted programs and initiatives to empower these strategic communities for Africa's future. OCP School Lab, a mobile school and soil laboratory to promote sustainable agricultural practices. AgriBooster, an inclusive program that provides farmers with the best conditions to increase yields and income. Women in AgriBooster, an initiative dedicated to empower women and support them to produce food crops for their communities. Farmer House, a last mile distribution solution for a better availability and accessibility of agricultural inputs. AgriPromoter, a farmer-centric approach reaching small rural farmers and providing agricultural inputs and training. Empowering African Youth, EME, a program that empowers young leaders through training and digital equipment to become expert and ambassador in the agriculture field. Innovation has been a key lever in our adventure. It has enabled us to know African soils for better fertility management, to elaborate customized fertilizer formulas for strategic crops with the support and dedication of diverse partners. Another major enabler for us has been the digital technologies applied in agriculture we have developed throughout the years digital solutions to bring value and support to smallholder farmers. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, my name is Moses Osiru. Uh, I'm the manager of the Regional Scholarship and Innovation Fund, Regional Coordination Unit at TCPE in Nairobi in Kenya. Um, my role uh, now is uh, a simple one, uh, to guide you through the rest of the opening session. Uh, once again, uh, welcome, and uh, thank you uh, to UM6P, as well as to OCP for hosting and partnering uh, with us. Uh, I wish to share with you very quickly uh, the theme and the objectives of this uh, conference. Uh, the theme is an African-led science, technology, and innovation contributing to the sustainable development goals and stimulating global development. The specific objectives of this conference are four. The first is to discuss the RCIF model, the training model, uh, and share it with key stakeholders with a, an aim to strengthen quality and the quantity of the services provided uh, by RCIF. Secondly, to share emerging lessons uh, from the program on how to strengthen doctoral training, uh, research and innovation in Africa, and discuss how to enhance the sustainability of RCIF. Thirdly, to discuss digital innovation in the context of the fourth industrial revolution. And um, 
the climate crisis, of course, and how these can be used to leverage and advance uh, our development goals. Lastly, we wish to share lessons on how best we can link university applied research with industry. And we are pleased to have uh, OCP here with us and other private sector partners. Uh, so I wish to, at this stage, um, invite Dr. Segenet Kelemu uh, for her opening remarks. And as she comes, I wish to uh, introduce her. Dr. Segenet Kelemu is the fourth Director General and Chief Executive of Officer of ISIPE, and ISIPE is the RCU of uh, RCIF. Uh, Segenet has de dedicated her life uh, to the achievement of poverty eradication and sustainable development. She has won many, many awards, and I won't mention all, but just to mention one or two, she was the 2014 L'Oreal UNESCO Laureate for Women in Science Awards. She won the Women of the Decade in Natural and Sustainable Ecosystems for Outstanding Leadership uh, by the Women Economic Forum. She was named one of the five heroes in the field who are using their talents to fight poverty, hunger, and disease, and pro provide opportunities for the next generation. And the last one I'll mention is, uh, and more recently, she is the 2022 international recipient of the prestigious Ellis Island Medal of Honor. Uh, this medal is officially recognized by the US Senate and the House of Representatives. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome Dr. Segenet Kelemu. Thank you, Moses, for this uh, glorious uh, introduction. So uh, I welcome you all uh, to this Regional Scholarship and Innovation Fund Hybrid Conference and thank uh, our partners, the Mohammed VI Polytechnic University and OCP for co-hosting the conference. And thank you for being here. As we emerge for the, uh, from the uh, COVID uh, pandemic, and I think thanks to scientists and effective partnership uh, globally that made vaccines available and uh, that has enabled us to be here in presence, in physical presence. We are also faced with new global challenges, especially climate and energy crisis, geopolitical tensions, inflation, rising cost of living in our countries and in many other countries. As a continent, Africa uh, should reimagine how to address these challenges of our time while continuing the, the uh, path of inclusive socioeconomic development. African countries uh, should double their efforts to strengthen co collaboration between scientists, governments, and industry and make deliberate investments in science and innovation to find, to find new and better solutions uh, adapted to the rapidly evolving context and local you know, uh, realities. Because I think investment in science really uh, is important for our well-being. According to the uh, recent Global uh, Innovation Index of 2021, African countries on average uh, uh, have a gross expenditure on research and development at 0.5% or less. And their innovation performance is much lower uh, compared to uh, other emerging economies in regions like Asia and Latin America. So we need to do better in that context. The continent should take this as a challenge and make deliberate efforts to increase investments in science, research, and innovation because it is what defines our destiny and progress in humans, as humans. The need for such investment is uh, recognized and well articulated in uh, several science, technology, and innovation policies and developing uh, development strategies of many African countries. And it is the aspiration of the African U Union Agenda 2023. We should nevertheless also applaud the, uh, uh, our African scientists and leaders of universities and research institutions 
who are training the next generation of scientists and contributing to uh, scientific breakthroughs and new discoveries with potential impact to uplifting uh, the continent and at a global scale. At uh, the organization I lead, SUPE, we make contributions to Africa's development by emphasizing high quality science and nurturing the best and the brightest of our scientists, uh, male and female, and in a diverse world class multicultural environment that uh, we offer. Our work is focused on nature-based solutions that improves our food system, uh, biodiversity co conservation, and reduce carbon uh, emission, and many other environmental friendly uh, solutions. We build interdisciplinary teams of scientists and use digitally enabled tools to keep us at the cutting edge of science. Our interventions are well uh, aligned with the UN Sustainable Development Goals uh, 2030 and help mitigate and adapt to climate change uh, and respond to the biosciences and innovation elements of the science technology innovation strategy uh, for Africa. At this conference, we shall uh, discuss the efforts of some African countries are making to invest resources in science, technology, and innovation for development and showcase the, uh, the achievements of the Regional Scholarship and Innovation Fund, RSIF, of the African government-led partnership for skills in applied sciences, engineering, and technology, uh, PASET, uh, for which CPE uh, is a uh, regional coordination units since 2018, and we are very proud to be part of this um, journey. I'm happy to inform you, uh, the, to inform this meeting that more than 50 institution are now, institutions are now uh, contributing financially and in kind in this, to this African Regional Scholarship Innovation Fund. One of them uh, being Mohammed VI Polytechnic uh, University here in Morocco. With the uh, total up to, up to date, with a total $51.7 million uh, contributed by African governments, the government of Korea, the European Union, and the World Bank, we have so far achieved more than uh, to have more than 240 uh, PhD students from 21 sub Saharan African countries uh, that have been awarded uh, scholarship. Partnership agreements have been also signed with 22 leading international institutions interested in hosting uh, students and undertake collaborative research focused on Africa and uh, challenges. 16 research grants and 21 inno innovation grants have been awarded through African host universities harnessing uh, university uh, industry linkages. And institutions uh, in institutional development built, uh, have been built of around 15 competitively selected PhD programs in past priority areas. And uh, finally, grow, a growing body of research output from RSIF students, faculty with 79, uh, more than 79 journal articles have been uh, published. And uh, I thank the, uh, the unit staff, some of them are here for all these achievements and partners as well. These results show the, effort, uh, the efforts and progress by African governments to realize their goals of using science, technology, and innovation to address uh, societal challenges. We thank the RSIF contributing governments and encourage them to continue providing leadership in this regard. We also invite many other institutions and African governments to be part of this uh, journey. Over the next two, day, two days, we shall meet uh, some of the uh, some students, graduates, and university leaders, and development partners who are part of the RSIF. We thank them and encourage them to continue their best at achieving their goals uh, of the RSIF for the future of Africa. I thank you once again for attending this hybrid RSIF conference. 
and uh, let us together reflect on the future of the continent, uh, continent's growth using science and innovation. Let us also partner to grow RSIF to contribute to the future of Africa uh, that we want. And I thank you very much. Thank you, Saganet. Um, Honorable Minister, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. I wish to um, invite Ms. Muna uh, Sally Meki on behalf of the World Bank uh, to make her opening remarks. Uh, Ms. Muna Sale Meki uh, is practice manager uh, for the Education Global Practice East and Southern Africa. Uh, Ms. Meki joined the bank in 2007 in the Africa Quality and Knowledge uh, Department. She has since held various positions in human development in Africa and in South Asia, working specifically on skills, development, girls uh, education, second chance education and education quality and a lot more. Uh, Ms. Seki, you're, you're welcome. Hello, good afternoon, and I think good evening for some people that may, that may be joining and good morning for others. Um, first, I'd like to say to the um, Honorable Minister of Education, hello, I'm uh, Valentin Umaria. She's also the governing, uh, also the chair of the Governing Council for PASET, so thank you for coming. Um, Dr. I'm sorry, Mr. Hashim El Habati, the president of UM6P, thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Uh, Sanget Kalemu, who just spoke, uh, who is the, uh, uh, DG of ECPE, and I think a few people who are online, so let me just say for Professor Aminata Diallo, the Executive um, Director for the Executive Board of PASIT, as well as Dr. Susanna Shwedrawaski, the no North Africa Director representing Dr. Um, Vera Songwe. So just as they said, my name is Muna Meki. I am one of the practice managers for the World Bank covering East and Southern Africa. I'm so glad that we were able to start meeting in person for those that came, and of course, hello to all those that are joining us virtually. Um, we know from the World Bank, I just want to say again, thank you very much to our host for hosting us. What a absolutely lovely place for those that didn't come. Or thank you so much for the hospitality and the um, wonderful hosting from the uh, UMC. 6P Polytechnic. So just to say, um, I think what we all know is that this has been a very tough year. People across the world have very much struggled and those in Africa have struggled disproportionately, particularly the poor. And I think it really underscored the importance of us having a skilled population to help address some of the challenges. Those who spoke before me talk, talked about it quite a bit, about the fragility, about the challenges in terms of financing. And what we know is that we need a strong cadre of both innovative universities as well as people that can help us address some of these challenges in the region moving forward. This directly connects to PASIT. As many know, PASIT is a unique initiative that improves technology and innovation in the region, as well as its flagship project program, which we're talking about here today, RCIF, which is about developing the next generation of scholars. What I do want to say is that we're going to talk a lot about showcase RCIF over the next few days, and I myself am really looking forward to learning more. But we can say a few things. I think Dr. Serenget already, already talked about the number of scholars that we have, the number of partner institutions, and of course, the fact that I think over 40% of the scholars are women. I know the the objective is 50, but we can really support, I think, the 40% as a big start. We know that women need to be a part of the conversation moving now and moving forward, and it's wonderful that RCIF is a part of that process. But what we also know is that financing is also required. If we want to continue this process, we must think about how we can continue to mobilize financing for RCEF. So we're really looking forward to some of our private sector partners, our other experts, those at different stakeholders to talk about how can we continue to finance this very important initiative. On the World Bank side, we are fully committed to RCEF, as well as all skills development programs that are supporting innovation in the region. Over the last seven years, the World Bank has provided approximately $50 million, 50, a uh, good 50% of that or 40% of that in the region on higher education in TVET. We continue to 
focus on this area now and in the future. And I personally would love to hear a lot more from our participants about how we can do better in this area, how we can better support our counterparts through RCEF as well as other initiatives. I welcome all the participants that are here. Again, thank you to our hosts. I'm very much looking forward to the next days where we're gonna to get to hear a lot about what RCEF has done and how we can even do more in the future. So thank you very much and thanks for those online. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Mackey. Um, Honorable Minister, um, all protocol observed. Uh, next, I wish to invite uh, Professor Minata Sal Diallo, uh, who is um, joining us online. Um, an introduction, Professor Minata Sal Diallo is advisor for science and technology, office of the president of the government of uh, Senegal. She is also the executive director of the PASET Executive Board. She is a professor of physiology at the University Chakanta Job in Senegal, in Dakar, Senegal. She is also an eminent scientist in her own right and a leading voice for promoting science education in Sub-Saharan Africa. She is a member of the Senegal National Academy of Sciences and also of the French Academy. She is a Knight of the National Order of Merit of France and Knight of the National Order of the Lion of Senegal. Uh, professor. Aminata Saldiallo, if you're online, I wish to hand over to you now. Um, thank you. So, uh, Chair of Pasa Governing Council, Representative of African Government, Dr. Zuzana Swidrovsky, North Africa Director representing Dr. Vera Songe, United Nations Under Secretary General and Executive Secretary of the Economic Commission of For Africa. Mr. Uh, Mrs. Mona Salif Mickey World Bank, the president of UM6P Isham El Adi, vice cha uh, chancellor and the faculty of African University and International Partner University, Dr. Segenet Kelemu, the director, the director of ECP, and CEO ECP, Development Partners, Distinguished Delegates and Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen. On behalf of PASET Executive Board, it's my pleasure to welcome you again to the Arctic Pan-African Hybrid Conference, which is being held under the theme an African-led science, technology, and innovation for contributing to the sustainable development goals and stimulating global development. Thanks to technology, we can have both person and online participation. Please allow me first to convey my apologies for not attending in person due to personal official responsibilities and that would not allow me to travel to Morocco this way. However, I'm fully with you, both in my commitment to the Passet Archive program and indeed in the most important convening for Passet. Allow me also to thank all participants in attending who have joined us for the important discussion on the role of science technology for Africa development. Those that have joined online and indeed those who travel uh, to Morocco and are today at the lovely UM60P campus. I wish to thank the University Mohammed VI Polytechnic for hosting this important conference. Many of you may not be ours. An important fact that UM6P was our international partner institution of which we are most proud. I'm out that six students currently match to do their PhD at UM6P with the first few study mom already arrived. Thank you, Professor Isham, Prof. Rashid, 
El Fatimi and your team thank to UM6P. I also wish to acknowledge funding and other support from OCP Africa, the World Bank, and the other partners that have made the conference possible. I also thank the government of Korea, the European Union, and other partners for support the PASEP. As of speakers have mentioned the impact of, of COVID. Excuse me. The impact. As the speakers have mentioned the impact of COVID-19 and more recently from the UK Ukraine war, it was only weeks after the war that, that the community price starts to I think the connection is so bad. So I was telling that as the speakers have mentioned, impact of COVID-19 and more you see from Russia Ukraine war. It was only a week after the with the war start that uh, commodity prices start uh, to soar uh, to unprecedented level. Wheat, mice, uh, sunflower, and crude oil price are key examples. Over 36 countries globally, many of which are African countries. Import at least 50% of their wheat from Russia and Ukraine. Unfortunately, Africa remain a net important of food despite having 60% of its uh, in, in and cultivate uh, arable land. The system, the system, the systematic application of society. Hello? Hello? This was in this was part of rational for a creation of PASET and more especially the regional scholars and innovation fund to ensure that we have strong reserve and training institution able to train capable researcher, scientists, leaders, and innovators, and to drive growth and sustainability. During this meeting, you will hear more about progress made by the program. And uh, we request for you input to guide the next steps in achieving PASET and RCF vision. We are pleased to have with us today most of the over 20, tw uh, 250 students that are studying under the prestigious passes as if scholarship. Congratulations to all of you for winning the passes award and we wish you well in your studies. I also, I also take the opportunity 
to congratulate our five first graduates uh, from cohort one. Importantly, I stress that we did not just create PASET, but that many African governments are both investing and providing thought leadership uh, to the program to ensure that it meets the need of the continent. This is indeed an African own and, uh, and managed program as if is also unique due to a sustainability mechanism, a planned permanent fund that we will also be discussing during the second day of uh, this meeting. As Sir Winston Churchill said, and I paraphrase, never waste a crisis. Let us support to support us if to deliver on its mandate. This is our time for action. Let me finish by thanking Dr. Segene Telemu and our team at ECP just over three years and pass it select the ECP uh, to, to manage to manage ASIF. And we are indeed both impressed and proud at the progress made by ECP. We selected ECP due to its a strong scientific track record, capab capacity building problem and Africa focus. Thank you, Segenet, for your leadership. I thank the Honorable Dr. Valentino, the Minister of Education of, a gov governing council, of the Government of Rwanda and the PASEC Governing Council Chair for our leadership in this initiative. I wish you all fruitful deliberation. Thank you. Joining uh, online and uh, for your opening statement. Uh, once again, apologies for any connection uh, challenges. Uh, mm -hmm. Honorable Minister, with your permission, um, all protocol observed, I wish to uh, invite uh, Dr. Zuzana Shvidrowski, Please apologize for if the pronunciation is not correct and uh, allow me to introduce her as she comes. Uh, Dr. Susanna is the director of the Sub-Regional Office for North Africa of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. She has over 20 years experience in international economic development at the African Development Bank and with the International Monetary Fund and the uh, OECD um, in macroeconomics of emerging markets and developing countries. She was previously an associate professor of public finance at the Prague University of Economics and Business and adjunct professor of economics at University of Cape Town in South Africa. You're welcome, Dr. Susanna. So good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, uh, ministers, all protocols observed. It's a great honor to be here at this, uh, at this forum and speak on the important topic of Africa-led science, technology, innovation, as they address SDGs and global development. So, so as was mentioned already by previous speakers, uh, we are meeting here today amid uh, actually triple crises. So we, have, uh, we have still the COVID, we have climate change, and now we have uh, the Russia-Ukraine crisis. So from COVID, uh, we know that uh, at least or about 80 million people were thrown back into extreme poverty, which the World Bank defines as uh, 1.9 1 US dollars a day. And uh, U United Nations estimates that therefore the uh, global number of people living in extreme poverty is approaching 900 million today. We also know that uh, due to the disruption of the global value chains, and also rising prices of energy and fertilizers, the food prices started to increase already before the Russia and Ukraine crisis. Now, Russia-Ukraine crisis actually put yet another major shock into it. 
and the prices has in, have increased further. And it disproportionately impacts this region, actually this subregion, North Africa. Uh, they are among the major importers of grain and also the grain constitutes a very large share of uh, diets in North Africa. So beyond uh, rising prices in this region, we also observed the uh, fear of shortages. And for example, in Egypt, uh, food inflation today, or not today, but in May, was in double digit numbers or actually exceeding 20%. We also know from the past that uh, food shortages and rising food prices are associated with destabilizing governments and uh, social unrest. So this is a very important challenge uh, for Africa, but for, I would say, North Africa especially. Beyond the short term uh, impacts, we also have uh, longer term structural factors. For, for example, climate change and uh, rising or growing population. So we know that the climate change will actually lead uh, to reduced productivity with the given agricultural methods, so new solutions are needed. And this is where the technology comes in. So already during the COVID, we saw that firms that were able to digitalize and move their operations online survived better. And uh, this also underscores the importance of education and closing the digital skill gap uh, and uh, the digital divide either along the gender lines, along the generational lines, but also between rural and urban areas. And let me just say, this is something on which our office in North Africa, United Nations Economic uh, Commission for Africa is currently working. And we plan to launch a report on digital skill shortages in Africa towards the end of the year. Uh, so uh, digitalization will also help improving agricultural productivity. We know that uh, actually Africa is leading in some areas of mobile technology and uh, it's helping uh, sharing information, access to markets. But we also know that food security is not only about production, it's equally about access to food and good storage. And that's again where technology can be critical. Now, this is quite exciting, especially in the context of the university, because the turn to digital technologies and renewable energy and innovation should make agriculture again interesting for young people. For, for quite a while, young people in Africa tended not to view agricultural sector as very interesting, not very glamorous, quite isolated, but again, the access to digital technology and also the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement is changing this. And it, this should be now an interesting opportunity for young African entrepreneurs. So um, let me now turn to our office. In the contents of, context of what's going on in the world and in the region, we plan that the major uh, meeting of experts and policy uh, discussions towards the end of the year will focus on food and energy security. And of course, ultimate objective of that is ensuring uh, increased productivity, but of course, ultimately well-being of of population. Now, none of this we can achieve alone. We can only work together. So we also hope to build new partnership here with scientists and uh, young people from, from Africa. And this is why it's really exciting uh, to be here with all of you today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Susanna Swazdowski. I, um, Honorable Minister, Scientists normally recognize trends, and uh, two trends that I wish to quickly pick on. One is that I've had to significantly reduce the reading of the CVs of the people who have introduced this morning. Uh, secondly, Honorable Minister, that um, all the people I've introduced are ladies. Unfortunately, I can't give... Uh, I'm not able to, to give the, a discussion and a conclusion on why that is. But um, allow me, Honorable Minister, uh, to at this stage um, invite you um, to uh, provide the opening address uh, for this conference um, and allow me to introduce you as, you as you come. Honorable Dr. Valentine Uwamaria is the Minister of Education, Rwanda, and the Chair of the PASET Governing Council. She has also been Deputy Vice Chancellor in charge of training, institutional development, and research at Rwanda Polytechnic where she was responsible for providing science, technology-based technical and vocational training, which enabled the beneficiaries to create jobs for personal development. Uh, 
She was Dean of the School of Science at the College of Science and Technology of the University of Rwanda. Her PhD is in water science and environmental technology from the UNESCO IHE, Institute of Water Education and, and the Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. She is well published and she sits on many boards of both local and international organizations. Please kindly put your hands together to welcome the Honorable Minister. Representatives of the African governments, Dr. Susan, North Africa Director representing Dr. Vera Songwe, Executive Secretary of the Economic Commission for Africa and um, United Nation, Nations Under Secretary General, Professor Aminata Saldiello, I hope she's still following us, the Passage Executive Director Ms. Mona Sali Meki, World Bank, the President UM6P, Icham El Habit. I hope I, I, you don't mind if I spelled it uh, not correctly, Vice Chancellors and Faculty of African Universities, if they are present, Dr. Segenet Kelemu, the Director General and CEO ECP different development partners, the distinguished delegates and participants, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to participate in this official opening ceremony of RISIF hybrid conference, whose theme is African-led science, technology and innovation for contributing to the SDGs and stimulating global development. On behalf of the PASET Governing Council and its organs, I wish to formally welcome you all, those that are here in the University Mohammed VI Polytechnic, and those that have joined virtually to this conference. Distinguished participants, at the onset, please allow me to acknowledge and appreciate. Dr. Segenet Selemu Kelemu, the Director General and CEO and the entire staff of the RISIF RCU, ECP for organizing this conference. Professor Hakim El Habti, President of University Mohammed VI Polytechnic and the local organizing committee led by Dr. Rashid El Fatimi, head of the doctoral school at UM6P. And indeed, all of you for preparing an excellent agenda and program for this conference. I'm pleased to highlight the objectives of this two-day conference for the Regional Scholarship and Innovation Fund, which are to discuss the role of STI in global development, in particular, as we embrace the fourth industrial revolution to include the digital innov innovation and how we can stimulate the production of relevant skills needed to facilitate these innovations. Examine how governments, universities, industry, and NGO sector can co-create solutions which shared, with shared value, which generate both economic and social benefits. Deliberate how RSIF can support transformative general, transformative green technologies that support green growth and the transition to a green and knowledge based economy in Africa towards sustainable development. Review best practices for managing international university partnerships, including modalities for positively impacting institutional capacity of African universities, their wide innovation systems and the potential for RISIF to unleash multiplier effects over time and most importantly to explore resource mobilization for the sustainability of the RISIF. 
Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, the Partnership for Skills in Applied Sciences, Engineering and Technology was created in 2013 to enhance the performance of Africa's science, technology, and innovations ecosystem. As you, might be, you may be aware, there are now 11 African governments, namely Benin, Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, Ethiopia, Ghana, Nigeria, Mozambique, Kenya, Rwanda, Senegal, and Tanzania that are fully part of the PASET initiative. Beyond African governments, the government of Korea, the World Bank and the European, Union, European Commission continue to make important contributions to PASET. The creation of PASET was hanged on Africa's need to ensure adequate scientific capacity to respond to and provide solutions to the challenges facing Africa and ensuring a meaningful life for Africa's population in line with the vision of the African Union's Agenda 2063. Looking back at the COVID-19 pandemic, as it has been highlighted by uh, the previous speakers, it is evident that the world is deeply connected. In line with the conference theme, which is African led science technology and innovation for contributing to the SDGs and stimulating global development, it calls for Africa to build and reinforce its own capacity towards responding to the global crisis by utilizing its own experienced researchers to develop innovative solutions to the problems of energy, climate and food security among others. All this while, there must be a deliberate uptake of the opportunities presented by emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence and machine learning. This will further bolster the continental efforts towards realizing the fourth industrial revolution. Ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased with the progress made by RSAF PASET's flagship program in delivering on PASET's mission. As you are aware, RSAF was created with several broad goals in mind, which are create a stock of high skilled, highly skilled scientists, professionals and innovators, in applied science, engineering, and technology areas. Identify and nurture young, talented African, Africans who wish to further their studies in asset fields where expertise is needed most. Address imbalances in the number of women and the disadvantaged groups in asset fields in Africa and lastly, build African university capacity to provide relevant asset training and to ensure continued investment in scaling up the asset education and workforce. I wish to thank directly Dr. Segenet Kelemu and her team at RSIF Regional Coordination Unit, ECP, for the successful management of the PASET RSIF project over the last three and a half years. Achievements to date include, I think I'm repeating what uh, the previous speakers uh, already talked about. There are now four cohorts, totaling over 245 PhD scholars at various stages of their studies and research. I note with great satisfaction that close to 40% of these PhD scholars are women. This is significantly above the global average, which is 28% of women in asset areas. 
I'm also pleased to note that RISF continues to enhance women performance and have recently updated their gender strategy for pursuing this. Women and men are equally critical for our development. The RISF mentorship platform that will be rolled out shortly will play an important role in supporting RISF PhD students' performance. We are also pleased to see the greater engagement of the private sector within RISF's network. We are pleased to have Nestle as a partner and indeed the current discussions with Microsoft and IBM Africa to partner with us. So far, five out of 15 scholars from the RISIF cohort number one have completed their PhDs at, as it was mentioned earlier, with the rest from the cohort expected to graduate this year. The five have gone back to their countries and are engaged in national development. We look forward to many more students graduating and joining the science workforce in their home countries. I'm pleased that some of the cohort one students are present here and we look forward to engaging with them during this conference. A key role that this conference will play is to provide important elements and ingredients to support the RISIF network to achieve its goals. We hope to receive feedback and inputs from all of you, our important stakeholders, and to use these inputs to strengthen our program. Allow me to use this opportunity to thank the entire PASET Executive Board through Professor Aminata Saldiaro, the Executive Director of the PASET EB, for the oversight and support to the RISIF. Your passion, leadership, and support are acknowledged and sincerely appreciated. Finally, I wish to assure you of the continued support and commitment of the government of Rwanda to the PASET initiative. Rwanda was one of the first governments to contribute to RISIF in 2018. Further to the initial commitment, the government of Rwanda is at an advanced stage towards a second contribution of $2, billion, $2 million through the RISIF initiative. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, with these remarks, please allow me to wish you good, all good deliberations. I'm now pleased to declare this conference open. I thank you all for your kind attention.